Finally, the video is done. It's up to date, all the information is correct, and I can just make the thumbnail and relax. You've got to be kidding me. Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be going over refined storage versus applied energistics 2. For viewing simplicity, this video will be divided into three sections. What they have in common, refined storage unique features, and then applied energistics unique features. Also, any decorative blocks or crafting materials will not be shown. I'm interested in specifically the storage side of things. So let's hop right into it. First off, we have controllers. Controllers are the heart of your storage system, and it'll show you everything attached to it and how much power it's using. You have your grids, which will show you what items are in a storage system, and your drives, which are the best way of storing items in a system. The cells can hold either fluid or items, and just need to be crafted to do so. Cables will connect things to your systems. Applied Energistics has a few more of these because it has channels, which is essentially a limit of how many things can be connected per face on the controller, but they generally do the same thing. There's also facades for covering up those controllers. Exporters will put items into a storage system. Importers will pull items out of a storage system. And external storages essentially work as a chest hooked up to the network. So that barrel had 64 beef in it. And if I take it out of the system, it's no longer in the barrel. Interfaces can be configured to hold a certain amount of items. So say I want 10 beef in this interface at all times, I can do that for both of them. And they also work as an exporter and an importer if you need that. Refined storage splits areas into items and fluids. Applied Energistics does not. You have your pattern encoders, which allow you to configure things for auto crafting. All you need to do is make a pattern and put it in its respective provider or crafter. Applied Energistics needs molecular assemblers to craft things, and its patterns are split into crafting, smithing, stone cutting, and processing. All of these except processing can work with a molecular assembler, but processing will work like a refined storage crafter, where it'll just push items to the nearest inventory and hope that the right item is piped back into it. So if I pipe out a jungle brick, jungle brick, that's not even an item. <laughs> if I push out jungle planks and push back in stairs, it'll consider this craft finished because it received jungle stairs. Same with Applied Energistics, that's all it's looking for. They both have a toggleable cable, long range wireless with either quantum rings or transmitters and receivers, personal wireless with wireless grids, redstone item level detection with the detectors or level emitters. Say if I want a redstone pulse being exported from the system, when I have 10 dirt, I can do that with either of these. Portable storage, which just acts as kind of like a backpack. The formation plane or constructor will place blocks for you, and the destructor or annihilation plane will break blocks. So if I have a couple gen attached to either of these, shut up, it'll go into the system. For applied energistics, you need to physically enchant these in a crafting table, or with an anvil and a book, but for refined storage you have to make the fortune or silk touch upgrades. Storage monitors will tell you how much of an item is in the system. Pattern access terminals will show you every crafter in the system and what patterns it has in it. We already did encoding terminals, I put it twice. Disk manipulation will pull items from one disk and put them into the network, which is very useful for applied energistics if they're full and you've upgraded to storage drawers or something. The features on this wall are similar, but are executed differently. For refined storage, if you want extra filters, you need a whitelist, but for applied, you need a capacity card. They both have the crafting upgrades and speed upgrades. You can make the filter a whitelist or a blacklist in refined storage built in, but if you want to invert it on applied energistics, you need an inverter card. Same with redstone, it's built in and refined storage, but not applied energistics. For a color application, it's just dyes for refined storage, but for A2, you need a color applicator. View cells will tell you which items are in a system, 
but it's configurable. This is honestly useless. I don't know why it's here. So if I want to see only oak planks in the system, I can put it in there. I see literally no need for this in either of them. Like just type oak planks. And both mods have a wrench that rotates blocks for no reason and away from preventing cables from connecting. Moving on to the unique features, refined storage has three. First off, there's the storage block, which just works as a worse storage cell. There's the regulator upgrade, which will control the amount of items exported or imported. So to say I want to keep 10 puffer fish in this barrel, I can do that by just putting a regulator upgrade in and configuring it. And finally, the security manager, which prevents other players from accessing your storage. Applied Energistics used to have this, but it's discontinued. So moving on to Applied Energistics differences. Applied Energistics is meant to work on its own, although is obviously useful if you have more mods, where Refined Storage will not work on its own. So everything in this category is just for energy. You have the energy acceptor, which will accept any power into the system. The energy cell, which will hold the power. The level emitter, which will give a redstone signal, depending on a configurable amount of energy. And the energy card, which will make some blocks consume less resources. You also have the quartz fiber, which is good for subnetworks and transporting energy, but not channels between two. So if I physically connect to these, the storage is going to be really upset. I don't really know how subnetworks work. I haven't found a use for them. But moving on, we have the network tool as well. The network tool can hold any applied energistics upgrades in them. And then when you open an inventory with it, you can see it. Also, it works as kind of controller on a stick. The cell workbench will help you partition cells and I already have an example in there, but say I want the cell only to hold gold ingots, I could do that. Although I think in this case it will hold other items unless I fill all of the types. We have the crafting storages. The way applied energistics crafting works is if I want to craft one gold block, I need temporary storage for those nine gold ingots whereas refined storage will just craft it. So that's all the storage does. The coprocessors will move items from the temporary storage to the actual crafter itself. So the more of them you have, the faster it'll be. The chest is just a way of viewing one cell at a time. And then we have a few miscellaneous upgrades. The memory card is useful for point to point, which we'll go over in a second. And it also copies machine settings. Equal distribution card helps you uh, split up your cells in the workbench. The fuzzy card will filter based on incredibly specific NBT data. So if I want to export only diamond pickaxes with silk touch and 20% durability from the system, I can do that. And the overflow destruction card destroys excess items. The aforementioned point to point is like little portals for your, for your storage system. You can see on the right items are going in and then coming out. These are not connected to the system in the middle. They exist for energy channels, redstone items, fluids, and light. As said before, they don't interact with the storage in the middle. It's just like a little portal for them. So over here we have a storage disk and you can see it's filled with point to point tunnels. And over in the middle, we have a different storage that does not have the same items. Finally, we have the IO systems. You have the spatial anchor, which will chunk load every chunk attached to the system. You have the IO port and cell, which will physically store blocks. With this, you can put in your machines and chunk load them if you don't want them near your base or loading anything else. And you can also use them to move unbreakables, such as end portal frames. I'm not sure if nether portals work. I need to try that. And finally, you can theoretically use these to teleport. Say this armor stand is me. When I use this, I'll be sucked into the storage dimension. 
And then with the chunk loaders and quantum rings, I can have an automatic pipe system, move this to a different location. And then when it gets put in that location, activate it. And it should theoretically teleport you. And that's about all I have for today. I did this video to show off both mods because I'm considering switching from refined storage to applied energistics for my modded world simply because the importers and exporters are so much more optimized. Like literally that's it. That's the only reason I want to switch over. <laughs> that's all I have for today. See ya.